you know, there's also been some other studies. I usually do it after a workout. Um, it's been like there's Same. been a, a study showing that it reduced delayed onset muscle soreness and improved muscle strength after high intensity training. Yeah, I heard that. Doesn't it increase testosterone in men too, or something like that, or, or muscle growth hormone, or something like that? Growth hormone, men, right? growth, growth hormone, hormone. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, which can be potentially, you know, linked to uh, muscle mass. But also, you know, there's been a there was a recent study where it was local heat exposure, um, and it was done in people that where they immobilized them for like seven days, so they exposed them to the heat or not, and they found that being exposed to the heat prevented uh, muscle atrophy by like forty percent. Uh, so wow. it's huge. And this is like really in line with animal studies that I've talked about in the past. So I was really happy to see that repeated in humans. And I think that has largely to do with the heat shock proteins and growth hormone. So the animal studies showed that it was dependent on a heat shock protein. So um, heat shock proteins are one of the most protective adaptive responses to heat stress that are, are induced. And, and it's not just heat stress, like things like cold also can induce heat shock proteins. Sulforaphane can induce heat shock proteins. Um, heat does it really robustly. Awesome. But yeah, I think that, so they've been shown to protect against muscle atrophy, um, against a variety of diseases that are as a consequence of like aggregated proteins, like, you know, cardiovascular, atherosclerosis, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's. Animal studies have shown that they can prevent and also help reverse some of that pathology. Um, and the good news is that it, like there's been some human studies that have shown that people that go into the sauna about 163 degrees Fahrenheit and stay in for 30 minutes can activate their heat shock proteins 50% above their baseline. And that, you know, so heat shock proteins can remain activated for about 48 hours. And the cool thing mm. is, is that this happens quicker and better in people that are heat adapted. Oh, really? Yeah. And, and wow. heat shock proteins have been linked to longevity, to human longevity, also longevity. And there's been longevity studies in, in lower organisms, you know, like flies and stuff and worms. It's also great for sleep too, you know, doing it just before. It uh, is. Yeah, it's phenomenal. It totally helps me. It helps with my sleep. It's repeatable, uh, hands down for sure. 